Hi everyone, so today I'm talking about annotation. It is a key tool of fabulousness for our classrooms that we probably don't use enough, not just in the English classroom, but in all of the classrooms. So this is part one of two videos that I'll do. This one's about how it ticks all the boxes and a few logistics too. And part two is going to be about the process that you can take your students through to uh, annotate a text and move on to greater things. Woo -woo. Annotation is the key to life. The elixir, the magic potion. It ticks all the boxes when it comes to learning styles and learning strategies. So um, let's have a look at some of those and then we'll go into logistics. So in terms of the why it's the link, students have the incoming information and we're talking about reading but also visuals. You can have a screenshot from a movie, for example, or an advertisement in the middle of a page and they annotate around it looking at colours and placement and things. So it's a link between their, their incoming information, their understanding and output. So you want them to respond later on. You want them to answer questions about it, to show their understanding. Well, that's the link. So we annotate things when we get a piece of paper and we find that it's difficult to understand. What do you do? Highlight, underline, make a wee note on the side. So it's, it's just key. And I feel like, you know, we're missing out the first rung of the ladder if we don't annotate. So think of annotation as the first rung of the ladder. That's a nice easy way to think. Remember it. Um, okay, multiple learning styles and strategies. Tick, tick, tick. Reading, writing, visual work. This is visual. I get to use colours, I get to use shapes, I have a picture in front of me. Just like an infographic is visual. Happy days. Suits learners like me who Weirdly for an English teacher, but I think most of us are in the same boat, I am completely intimidated by a page with no pictures. Um, so the other thing is kinesthetic learners. This is about playing hands-on with the text. You're not just reading it and then answering some questions about it or responding to it or discussing it. You're actually playing hands-on with it and you're playing with your pens and your highlighters and things. So kinesthetic box. Uh, speaking, we're usually we're speaking, um, to, you know, or students are speaking to the teacher or to each other when they're annotating a text. It's quite a little hummy kind of activity. So speaking box is ticked and I guess that means listening to. Um, the other thing is, you know, your strategies in terms of working alone in peers or in groups. Students can work alone. I always give students the choice because you know, sometimes you just don't like working with other people and sometimes you don't like working alone. So I think it's important. So um, students can work alone, they can work in pairs, they can work in groups of three. I wouldn't recommend any more than three because somebody's going to be sitting in the back seat otherwise. Um, and also scaffolding. So as I said before, it's the first rung of the ladder really. It scaffolds students into a text. Um, it gives them that leg up to greater things. Ooh. Um, differentiation. You can differentiate quite easily. For example, find five things. Find seven things. Uh, uh, make a note of the effect of three of those things. Give your personal response. Uh, you can, and, and students should be able to use the words yuck or whoa, you know, things like that. Get them to have a bit of a play with, with a bit of slang. There, so you can differentiate quite easily, but it's also self differentiation, differentiating because students will find what they can find. Um, it's also differentiationable uh, by year level. You can have five year olds highlighting the words that start with C. Happy days. Right, logistics, short text. Use short text um, and place them in the middle of an A4 page. Obviously, students need plenty of room to write around the outside. Um, if your school has the budget, do the A3 paper. Um, most schools don't. I've been thinking, we have got this massive roll of brown paper um, at home. I don't know where it came from, but 
that's that'd be fantastic to stick your text in the middle of you know rip off section give it to the kids get them to stick the text in the middle of and then they've got lots of room to write around so that would be something especially if they're working in pairs or groups you know make sure they each have a pen maybe a different color pen so you can see who's so it would make sure that everyone's doing a bit of writing um the other thing is uh yeah give your students the choice of working alone in pairs or in groups um the pillage and plunder method i've talked about this before years ago so once students you have enough annotations on their page and you can judge what's enough for that student or that little little pair of students you know whether they've kind of pushed themselves um and then then you can give them the shoulder tap and say okay leave your work there so that students always leave their work on their desk go and pillage and plunder so go and find look at what other students are doing get some ideas and then come back and add to your own annotations so i call it pillage and plunder so and the kids love it and and the thing is they come back they add to theirs and like oh miss can we copy yeah it's not copying it's getting ideas from others and then what they find is or some of them you know will find that that helps them bounce um more ideas from from the ones they've stolen um, the other thing is that suddenly they've got a whole lot more words on their page so that's a confidence builder happy days um right so you've got to help under, uh, students understand what annotation is obviously give them examples um but also put a sentence or two that's all it needs on your board on your whiteboard and just do your annotating around it um and model it to the students maybe they have a few um a bit of an input as well you know oh I'm circle that word you know starving circle the word oh what does that make you think of oh starving people and drought ridden countries must right break a note of that um so little things like that and that gets them started um remind them that um, annotation sounds like notes so that's an easy way to remember what annotation is it's making notes and notation um, also sell the visual and kinesthetic thing you know um, it's it's about a, we're creating a picture with this text kids so that makes things less intimidating for two students who are not keen readers in edX Um, so yeah, sell the visual thing. Uh, what's what's brilliant about this is that uh, so moving on now. So the skills that students learn, we've done the um, the the learning styles and strategies, and we've looked at logistics. So let's look at the skills. They can identify parts of speech. They can look at vocabulary. They can note meanings. They can give little responses. Um, what are they doing? They're playing with evidence. This gives them evidence for later on and they can bounce ideas from evidence rather than trying to think of an idea and then go, oh, I don't know why I know that and finding it difficult to, to link to evidence. Actually with annotation, they're bouncing from the evidence. So they're forming their ideas based on what they read in the text days um, and then from there of course you can bounce into other areas so oh we've just read this poem about the moon now write a short story where you are the moon and they they, they can do that better because they've got this understanding a starting point with what they've annotated from this poem in this poem so um brilliant annotation is your key to life I believe um, have fun and part two remember it's going to be about the process of annotating enjoy oh.